Hello, this is Yaakov Kronenberg from Jerusalem, and tonight we'll be doing another chart, another class in our series of classes on um, on Leo Ascendant and um, and the Sun, the ruling planet in the different signs. Uh, tonight we're going to be doing the Leo in uh, in the seventh house and the sign of Aquarius, and it's another very interesting combination, which we can spend some time talking about. Uh, when you have the ruling planet in the seventh house, it means the person is going to feel like he gives himself up too much to other people, uh, right? Uh, because you give you one, uh, you you are one, and you're giving yourself up to seven to the other people, to the marriage partner, to the partnerships, to the others. And so, in a certain sense, it's a difficult uh, placement. Remember, in the horoscope of Adam and Eve, we, we see the seventh house um, is Libra on the ascendant, and the sun is in fall in Libra. It's not the best place for uh, it's not the best place for the sun. You don't want your ego to de- be dependent on other people. Uh, sometimes it can make difficulties in marriage because the person becomes so attached to the to the partner that. Um, and becomes very dependent on the partner because of the um, because his his or her ego is is connected to the to the marriage partner, and so they have a tremendous amount of ego involvement. People like this, they they almost never get divorced. It's the last thing they'll do is to get divorced. They'd rather you know suffer nine uh, every level of Gehenna and not get divorced. Mm. Because their ego is so dependent on their marriage that they're, they're afraid of losing it. Um, so again, like we say, that having the sun, uh, especially as the ruling planet in the seventh, is never is never uh, a cup of tea. It's it's not it's not an easy placement. But again, it has positive signs. It could be that the, the the marriage partner will be very important, right? You got the son there on Leo. The son, the, the son connected with importance, with dignity, honor. The person could be very honorable, very uh, dignified um, partner. A uh, person who is very well uh, respected uh, could be there if you have the son there in the seventh house. And. Um, And you have to know that when it's an Aquarius, uh, say here we're dealing with someone who's got a sun in an Aquarius, so that Aquarius makes this doubly hard. Because you don't like the sun in, in the seventh, and you don't like the sun in Aquarius, because uh, Aquarius is uh, is the detriment of the sun. Right? The sun doesn't work good in air signs, like we say, like it's in fall in Libra, in air sign, it's in detriment in Aquarius in air sign. Because he can't build an ego out of air. It's not easy. Um, so when you have a ruling planet that's in detriment, but in a strong place, you have to remember the seventh house is one of the angular houses, very strong there. So the sun does have angular strength. It makes it working 100%. And so in a case like this, you'll have a person who overcompensates. Right? This is the classic case, the seventh the sun in the seventh house in Aquarius. This is the case of the daredevil, the show-off. Right? Somebody who wants to prove himself, really prove himself to other people. Um, I remember once I had a friend that was a friend, very, very, came from a very distinguished, wealthy family. And he had this combination. And he was like a daredevil. He was a... He was a racing car driver, and he would, you know, he would do all sorts of things to show off, you know. He would, you know, out drink everybody, and he would, you know, we lived in New York, and he would jump from one building to the next, you know. Each building was, you know, 50 story high, and he would, you know, show off that he could do it. Uh, you know, it, is, uh, it tends to be the, the case of the person who really wants to prove themselves, this combination. Um, 
And I don't want to look at a chart, a very famous man. Yeah, I think he was Jewish, actually, one of the great Jewish athletes. Um, right, he was Jewish. Um, and he was um, one of the great Jewish athletes of the 20th century. He was a swimmer. His name is Mark Spitz. He won like a nine, nine gold medals in the Olympics for his uh, swimming ability. And so you see that again in this chart, this ability, that, this idea of, you know, competition, of showing off, of being the, of, you know, of uh, proving yourself. And so he had the sun exactly on his seventh house cusp in Aquarius. And not only that, but he had it conjunct uh, Jupiter, so it added to this, uh, it added to this desire to, to prove himself and to, and to show off and to be the best and uh, to win the praise of people. And so he devoted himself totally to, to swimming and became a world champion at that. Uh, and if you look at his chart, it's an interesting chart. I should just mention one thing on hand. If you look at his chart, you would think there would be a lot of water. Right? Because water is swimming. If you look at his chart, there's zero, zero water. And uh, really no nothing in water except, well, he's got Uranus and Cancer. But um, that's generational. Everybody born in his birthday has that. It doesn't mean much. Uh... But what it means is that when you don't have water, is that one of the uh, you know water is emotionality, and when 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 the person when the chart is lacking emotionality, it's difficult uh, to understand other people, to empathize with other people, uh, difficult to express oneself emotionally sometimes. In his chart, especially because you know he's got that uh, ruling planet in Aquarius, which can be a pretty cool type of ascendant. <coughs> <laughs> a cool type of ruling planet. Uh, not emotional. And so he he lacked that moon. And so it's one of the... Uh, I remember, you know, I have... Uh, what do you call it? My teacher used to say, one of the... If a person is lacking earth, uh, water, so there's two things he can do for them. Uh, one is to have them, you know, swim a lot, uh, hang out by the ocean, you know, and uh, that adds emotionality to the to the person. And, or you can have them learn musical instrument. Musical instrument also uh, brings out a person's like emotions when they hear the, when they play the music. And so he, uh, I was looking at his, uh, his history. Besides swimming, after he retired from swimming, he became an avid, uh, you know, boatsman and yachtsman and all sorts of things like that. You see that he uh, really likes to be around the water. And um, I assume he also lives on the ocean. He was, uh, he was somewhere in California, I think, which is probably on the ocean. Uh, and so it's an interesting uh, combination there in his chart. And afterwards he became a very successful entrepreneur and a motivational speaker. All the same ideas of that son in the seventh house, you know, the motivational thing to encourage people, teach them how to be successful. All sorts of things with the son, that son Jupiter conjunction. The Jupiter helps his son a lot. Uh, it gives it great strength, great health. It gives excellent health, excellent strength. And the Jupiter, if you look at it, the Jupiter and the sun are both opposite the moon, Pluto. Jupiter is exactly opposite Pluto, and that's one of the signs of wealth and great success. Jupiter is success, and, and Pluto is obsessiveness. So there becomes an obsessiveness for success, and it usually leads to success. And Jupiter is also money, and it begins with an obsession with money. So the person becomes uh, rich in a lot of cases. So in his chart, they're exactly, exactly opposite, so it has a powerful effect on his chart. In any case, I thank everybody for listening. Hope they enjoyed the class.